there's one place to start, which I think has to be Juventus because it feels like they are the big winners yeah. of this January transfer window. And let me take you back to the previous transfer window, Jules, when it was pretty much gloom and doom. In the summer, you know, they'd managed to sign Locatelli with some complicated formula. They knew Cristiano was going to leave either in the summer or, um, or, or indeed at the end of that window or during that window. They were hoping it would go sooner. He left on the last day to go to, yeah. to, go to United. And so then they're scrambling around and they just get your boy Moise Canna. It's one of, the, one of those loans, obligation to buy in the future. I mean, it was pretty glum. But now all of a sudden, they get Dusan Vlaovic yeah. and Denis Zakaria, who, frankly, you know, we're like, oh, Zakaria. But it feels like this is exactly, exactly what they needed. That's right. I mean, the striker, and we, we don't need to go again on Vlaovic and all the praise. We've spoken endlessly with, about uh, him. He's but 21, he's amazing. It's, it, this is an amazing deal. You've paid a lot for it. You've paid up to 80 million euros, which is a lot of money, and money that we didn't think they had. Let's be honest, I, I thought Andrea Agnelli kept saying to us, well, we're going to die if there's no Super League, we've got no money left, we're going to die. Somehow they put out of the hat 80 million quid. We'll get into that more detail getting, later. But that's perfect. And then I think in midfield, they needed someone like Zakaria with the work rate and the, the physicality and, and all the effort. Bo a ball winner, not, not a baller per se, but a ball winner. Uh, so if you've got someone to move the ball and pass the ball, and create chances for, for Vlaovic, then you're onto something very, very special. Because defensively, I mean, if you look, you love, you love doing your spine of the team, right? Yes. So if you look, okay, Chesney, mm -hmm. yeah, but Chesney, and then, for example, De Ligt, and then Zakaria, and then Vlaovic, on top of everything they have around, if Max Allegri is the right guy for this team, then I think there's something very good there in the making. I think what's exciting is that they got younger, um, yeah. We'll get about the we'll get the financial side um, in a minute, but now I, and for me also they get leverage over DiBala and Morata and their futures and whatever happens to them. Morata could yet leave. We're taping this as the window still open for a few hours. I don't think he will, but yeah. who knows? Um, but you know, they, they, it doesn't feel like they're over they're over a barrel. You make a really good point about the money involved and the commission paid. Juventus because they're listed on the stock exchange, they have to make everything public. They, played, they, they paid 11.6 million in um, what they call solidarity payments and auxiliary, uh, auxiliary expenses. I mean, you can work out the solidarity payments, which I was kind of surprised they had to pay them because it's an internal transfer, but regardless, you st it's still gonna be around 10 million that, yeah. that they have spent. But um, to Partizan, I think they had to pay money to Partizan. Uh, solidarity payments? Um, I think that might be training compensation, actually. Oh, that, yeah, that, yeah, um, yeah. Regardless, though, you know, it's still it's still a big chunk, but you're getting somebody who's who's 21. I mean, you said he's fantastic. Is is he the best under 22 central striker not named Erling? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Is, is there some, I mean, you know, that I think is something that's um, that's big. We're going to get into that more later, but I wanted to touch upon, um, you talked about, you know, where they're getting the money from. Yeah. They moved two players out, Bentoncourt and, and Kulusevsky. And I think to me, one huge takeaway about this, and I always say this, about spending money on young players as opposed to older veterans. There's a market for Bentoncourt and Kulusevsky, and there isn't a market for Aaron Ramsey, for example, yeah. because these guys are younger because these guys are younger and they make less money. Yeah. So you can find people who, you, you can find people to take them. And, and I think that's pretty, pretty huge. They're one point off of, uh, off of Atalanta yeah. in, in Serie A. Um, I thought they do have a game in hand. I mean, do you, are you willing to go out on a limb and say it's nailed on that they yeah, make top four I now? Mean, Vlaovic has to deliver, right? I don't, I, won't, I don't want to hear about pressure and expectation. You've paid 80 million euros for, for Dusan Vlaovic. It's for, you, for him to take you into top four. It's not as simple as that, and they still would have to create chances for him, which, by the way, we've seen. They're very average this season in Serie yeah. in terms of ball in the box, chances creating, and everything like that. So this will have to improve. And, and Federico Chiesa is injured. And Chiesa is injured. So Allegri will have to find a way of putting Vlaovic in the best uh, situations and context for him to score loads of goals. But he has to deliver now. You don't yeah. pay all that money for them then to finish fifth or not move up in the, in the table after you've signed them.
Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.